This is the view into the blast cabinet, um, and the pieces are in place uh, using 80 grit glass beads at 50 psi. You can see how quickly the pieces are cleaned up. We need to get the um, surface textured so that the powder coat will adhere properly. And then this also removes the last bits of flux and other uh, dirt and debris from the part. So you can see just going around the part, uh, hitting each of the pieces. Uh, what you do have to be careful of, and you can see a little bit of deformation there, is that the pressure of the blast will actually deform the U-channel uh, fairly quickly. So it's actually better, as you'll see later, uh, to use a more oblique approach to the part uh, to minimize deformation. Otherwise, you can just bend it back out with a fit or uh, a screwdriver pressed into service to do that. There you can see that I was pressing the nozzle against my glove. It's just the line keeps clogging, um, whether it's due to moisture or insects, I don't know. Uh, it does seem that stink bugs are particularly fond of glass media for whatever reason, uh, if I don't keep the door closed on the glass cabinet. Now we're ready to start the powder coating. Uh, get the pressure on the gun set and start agitating it. One of the things with the inexpensive powder coat guns is that the uh, gun actually has to be agitated over here. Uh, shaking the gun, or as you can see, I'm just wrapping on it with my knuckles uh, to keep the powder going. This does seem to be a bit of more of a problem with the metallic powders uh, rather than just plain colors. So we just keep going around the part, building up an even coat, uh, looking for any areas that are missed. Uh, you can see that the powder has been coating not only the part that I'm directly aiming at, but it also wraps around the backside from the electrostatic force. I'm using 25 kV at this point. Uh, 
or the power or the uh, static charging, uh, which is the upper setting on this gun. One thing to note is I'm using the Eastwood um, powder coating and painting stand. It is basically designed for elves. So there is an extension section that is in the middle to get it up to close to head height. section in the middle of the brown versus the blue. And more of the touch-up coating and the tapping of the gun to get the powder to come out. You really don't want the powder you know, you can, to come out too hard. Um, you can always crank up the air pressure, but then you also tend to blow off more of the powder uh, as you're doing it. Here I'm adding more of the parts. So when you're doing the coating, you want to be hanging the parts from the oven rack, but you don't want to overload it because you really can't spray the parts if you have too many on there. So it's better to start off, do your most critical parts first, hang the others next. Uh, here you can see that I'm also adding clip leads in addition to just hanging from the stainless hooks. So one of the important things is that you have to have a good ground for the parts for the powder to be attracted. And it is really dicey, just simply relying on the conduction from the, the, the grid or, or shelf from the oven and the stainless hook uh, to the part. And it's much better to add a clip lead to discreetly electricity away and then at the end I can just simply yank the clip lead off carefully and then touch up those pieces. As you can see this is not exactly an expert part of a demonstration but it is what, <coughs> what an amateur can achieve in the home garage without really any special equipment. You've got a powder coating gun, you've got an oven to bake the part in, and yes, you don't want to use your home oven to put the powder coating in. Not only do you stick in the house, but you can mess the oven, and it makes for bad taste as a tool. Um, it's much easier to go and get Habitat Restore, or which is where I got mine, um, or off of Craigslist. In this case, I picked up an infection 30 inch oven for $25 from Habitat Restore. Would have been about $2,500. So, just finishing up the last of the parts. Uh, you can see I did not correctly clear my path. Um, which is important when you're spraying, whether it's powder coating or regular. Uh, you want to make sure you've got a clean path. And uh, this is a bit more clumsy than I would like. Just finishing doing a little bit of touch up, looking for any thin spots, uh, stumbling over some of the limited access I've got and getting ready to put the parts into 